and throwing fantasy football season and fantasy drafts in the next couple of weeks. He's a few tight ends out of his sleepers this year. The first guy, Sam Laporta of the Detroit Lions. So this Lion offense last year, I know a lot of shootouts they were in. I know they were trailing in ball games early, but the rookie Laporta, I think, could be a good sleeper option this season. And right now, like I said, this Lion team traded TJ Hawkinson last year, figuring they were going to get a tight end in the NFL draft. And that's what they did here with Sam Laporta. So right now, Laporta, he's going about 13th, 14th round for the most part in fantasy leagues I've been seeing. So I think he could put up numbers. I don't think he's going to be a top 12 tight end, but in deeper leagues or if you're totally pumped in tight end, I think he's definitely a sleeper option at the position here, Sam Laporta. And like I said, he plays in an offense with some dynamic playmakers. I'm on Ross St. Brown. He had a great year once again last year. He's one of the top picks at the wide receiver position this year in fantasy football. I like Gibbs and Montgomery as a decent tandem in the backfield. And they don't really have a great number two wide receiver, especially with Jamison Williams right now suspended the first six games of the year. So Laporta, I think we're going to see targets go his way. Jared Goff, he always liked the tight end as a security blanket. Even going back to his Los Angeles Ram days, obviously with Tyler Higby as his main man over there. So right now with Jared Goff, the way this offense is constructed, and then having obviously confidence in trading Hawkinson, who's a top five tight end last season, and now drafting Laporta, I think we're going to see some big things out of Laporta. And it's not going to be a weekly starting player, I think, but by the end of the year, he definitely could sniff that top 12 at the tight end position. Next tight end is Irv Smith Jr. of the Cincinnati Bengals. So I know we've heard a lot of things about Irv Smith over the last few years, but he just never broke out. Injuries obviously were a concern. And then once the Vikings traded for Hawkinson last year at the deadline, that was it for him and his time in Minnesota. But now he goes to a Bengal team that was Hayden Hurst in free agency to the Carolina Panthers. And if he could stay healthy here, he's in a dynamic offense as well, where a lot of attention is going to go obviously to a Jamar Chase and T. Higgins, rightfully so, where Irv Smith Jr. could work the middle of the field and make some plays because he's an athletic tight end. We used to line up as a wide receiver in college and just injuries have been a problem and just not being a fit or in sync with Kirk Cousins as well was a problem. So last year only 25 catches, 182 receiving yards and two touchdowns. I know he missed the majority of the season with Zerf Smith, but if he could come into this year healthy and we know Joe Burrow, he likes hitting that tight end when you least expect it, especially if there's double team over the top. On a Jamar Chase, Irv Smith Jr. pretty much, he's going undrafted unless in 14 team leagues or deeper. But if the drafts right now, he's available in 80% of fantasy leagues. And right now to be on an offense with a lot of good guys where the field's going to be open for him. And one of the better quarterbacks in the league as well he has this year in a Joe Burrow who's only getting better as his career is going to go on and during his third season, fourth season right now. So I like him as a sweeper this year, Irv Smith Jr. Like I said, you could wait to the last round of most drafts if you're pumped in tight end and want to take the next tight end, Zach Ertz of the Arizona Cardinals. So Zach Ertz last season, he had a great year until he went down, obviously with the knee injury and was out for the, I believe in week nine or week 10 is when he went out. So last year, 47 grabs, 406 receiving yards, four touchdowns and two two-point conversions. I know Kyler Murray, he's going to be out with no timetable. But this offense, they don't really have a lot of players on this team. Is this Arizona offense? We saw DeAndre Hopkins get cut. They got nothing for him. He went to the Tennessee Titans on a decent free agent deal. Rob Day Moore, we know, still over there as well. But besides that, and Greg Dorch, there's not much on this offense, I believe. But and Hollywood Brown, so Zach Ertz, if he could step right in, and they're saying Week One he's going to be ready and 100% to go, which is pretty surprising as well. He came off in the injury pretty quick, is Zach Ertz. We know he's a big target. We know he's up there in ages now, and probably his best seasons are behind him. But last season, I got him late in a couple drafts, Zach Ertz, and he was one of the better tight ends, like I said, before he went down with injury. So right now, if you want to wait towards the end of your fantasy draft, Ertz, after drafts right now, he's available in 86% of fantasy leagues, but I think is the more... Drifts go on, and the lack of weapons, like I said, on this offense over there. As long as he's going to get a starting role, and McBride's not going to be beating Zach Ertz out for snaps and stuff, I think he can be a sleeper tight end and a usable tight end. And there we go. And the next tight end is Jake Ferguson for the Dallas Cowboys. So Ferguson, he's going to be the number one tight end over there for this Dallas Cowboy team this season. We saw Dalton Schultz get a good money contract and go to the Houston Texans. 
And Ferguson, this Cowboy team, they got confidence in him. He was a fourth-round pick in the 2022 NFL Draft. So last year was his rookie year. We didn't see much, but he did have 19 catches, 174 receiving yards, and two touchdowns. And he's on an offense, obviously, with dynamic playmakers as well. C.D. Wham, last year was a great year for him. Brandon Cooks, I think, is an underrated move for this Cowboy team. He's been a 1,000-yard receiver for most seasons in his career. Gallup now is number three receiver. I think that's what he really is. That's a good spot for him as well. And also, you got Tony Pollard coming out of the backfield who can make a lot of plays and catch 50, 60 balls himself. So right now, defenses, they're not really going to be game planning for Jake Ferguson. And one thing about Dak, I know he's not the greatest quarterback, but he always targets that tight end, and he's always in sync with his tight end. We saw with Jason Witten early in his career. We saw it for Blake Jarwin for a couple seasons, and then we saw it the last few years with Dalton Schultz. I'm not saying Jake Ferguson is going to be putting up Schultz type of numbers, but it's not going to be surprising to me if he does four or 500 yards, scores from anywhere five to seven touchdowns. So right now, he's pretty much a tight end, not getting drafted at all. Available 93% of fantasy leagues after fantasy drafts this year. And a tight end I have is a sleep. Next tight end's Foster Monroe and the New Orleans Saints. I know Jawan Johnson's over there, and he had a solid year last year at the position. Jimmy Graham's there as well. But Monroe, we know he has a great rapport, obviously, with Derek Carr, where they were teammates with the Vegas Raiders over the last few years. And the Raiders let him walk in free agency. And they gave him a good contract with this New Orleans Saints team. So I don't think Monroe's going to sit on the bench. I think him and Johnson, they're going to use in two tight end sets. And like I said, when you play with your quarterback and follow him to another team, obviously it's a good sink and a good friendship. And last year in and out of the lineup, obviously with Waller in and out as well with injuries. 33 catches, 420 receiving yards, and two touchdowns. I think is a number two tight end on this team. It wouldn't be surprising if he could take over as the season goes on. Is more role, like I said. And tight end this year, it's starting to pan out. is a decent position. And all these guys I've mentioned, it wouldn't be surprising to me if they could finish the year in the top 15 at the position. So right now, I like Moreau because it's more, he's in a dome once again this season is his home games. He's with Derek Carr. And this offense, they got some guys as well that can make some plays where attention's not going to be towards a force to my row or even a Jawan Johnson. You got Kamara, I know he suspended three games. Jamal Williams, DeAndre Miller possibly in the backfield could have an impact this season. And Michael Thomas, even though I never count on him, but Chris Olave definitely is a top receiver for this team. So that's a few tight ends. I have his sleepers here, entering the 2023 season.